Hi, everyone, and welcome to my podcast. Today, I'm here with my good friend, Jesus, whom I went to Kundalini Yoga teacher training with in Chicago last year in 2022. And we're here to pretty much talk about our experiences with kundalini yoga, our, our path, um, how it's been for us, the benefits, pitfalls, anything really. So welcome. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah. Do you want to get into a little bit of just kind of how you got there, or what it's been like for you? Yeah. So uh, I have a pretty unique story where um, I was ready to get back into some sort of spiritual practice. Um, I had been exploring different communities. I, I moved from San Diego to Chicago. I originally from Chicago, went to grad school in San Diego. And out here, I was uh, working with the Native American communities and their spirituality, the spirituality or way they work with spiritual, the spiritual world was very unique. And I never really experienced that. So moving back to Chicago, I was looking for something unique, something that had that spiritual component to it. And I was Googling in Chicago, uh, yoga studios on there and that Nam Chicago was one of them. And I just read a little bit about their website and I said, uh, I didn't even know what Kundalini yoga was. So I took a class and I immediately after leaving the class, I was, I left feeling like I can't listen to music. I just want to be silent. And that to me was like, it moved something in me that I didn't know what it was, but I wanted to keep, keep trying it out. So I kept going back. And at that time I really needed a space to really be there. I, I was going through a lot personally at home, at work and transitions. And um, at that time, going three times a week really meant a lot to me. So I was going Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wow. And that really became a routine for about three months. And um, it became a practice that I really wanted to keep diving into. Wow, that's good. You're, you're going really consistently. Yeah, it's yeah. such a cool practice. I just ran into this guy at Satnam Yoga that was telling me how he had been doing vinyasa yoga for some time. And then he got into hair at Satnam and he's like, wow, I just feel something. Um, It's like something special about this, like something deeper. And I'm thinking about doing this teacher training and everything like that. Um, But Kundalini Yoga, it's so interesting because it's so much different than Look, it has many of the same aspects of other forms of yoga and the philosophy and origins are are similar, but the practice comes out in a lot of different way, you know, like with the mantras and the breathing and everything right. like that, that you wouldn't really see so much in, in most other studio yoga that you would, that you would go to out here in the U.S. Right. And, and I had been to other yoga classes like hot yoga, uh, the typical vinyasa yoga and it just, it felt like a workout, but it didn't, it felt mainstream. It felt like a yoga workout. And I had been to core power yoga, you know, as an establishment and whether it's in different states, different cities, um, like a, like an inward experience, at least that maybe they were trying to promote it as an inward experience, but it never really felt feel connected as I did in, in Satnam with Kundalini yoga. And like you said, I think at first it was, uh, it was, the different modalities of mantra chanting that I've never experienced before that I was like, didn't know what that, that I didn't feel that vibration through my body until I did that doing the yoga. And when I experienced that, I was like, well, this has got to be something, uh, something I got to keep doing. Yeah. And the vibrate, those vibrations of the sound and getting us to use our voice or they call it the nod is, mm -hmm. is so powerful, you know? And I think I've learned even been teaching a, a lot this last year, um, it, it's challenging for some people at first because it's just against the grain of what like projecting your voice and doing a mantra could be awkward or embarrassing or uncomfortable so even that in itself is a really good practice because it's getting you sort of to work through your ego and everything um, not that the practice is all all mantra because there's definitely a lot of other aspects to it but I think that's definitely a special part of it you know mm -hmm. and those Sikh mantras that are used in there are very ancient so it's said that um you know that when you do them you're connecting with basically this this deeper intelligence in yourself and with all the beings that have put that vibration out into the universe that have chanted that mantra um 
you know, over these hundreds or thousands of years. Right. And, and the cool thing was that I, I, the teachers would, you know, the teachers at the class would mention those components. Like, you know, this comes from ancient, ancient times. And one thing that I know one of the teachers there would, would keep mentioning is keep your mind open and just keep trying it just to see what it feels like for you. So those mantras, I, at first, I did feel like I hate hearing my voice. Before I like did not want to hear my voice, I just cringed every time I saw my voice or heard my voice in videos. And this was a moment where I could re redefine that relationship with myself of, you know, my, you know, my voice is, I can use my voice in other ways and I can hear my voice differently. And then with the vibration of the, the powerful mantras, it really did something for me. It moved uh, the energy in me. And uh, at first it did feel like it was a cult in a way. I was like, why are we all standing at the same time? <laughs> um, and that was the thing that did cross my mind. And, but I also kept trusting myself that um, I know myself and this feels good for me and I want to keep doing it. And, and that's what uh, I, luckily I kept trying and kept, kept uh, trust, trusting the process. And as I kept trusting the process, we did a teacher training. And then that's when I really learned about the background, the history and how powerful these mantras are. And not just the mantras, but everything else that is encompassing with uh, Kundalini Yoga. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, just a little bit that I want to tell people about the history from like how I understand it of Kundalini Yoga is that basically most other forms of yoga, Hatha Yoga and Vinyasa Yoga and all these forms of yoga, they, they come from, from India and the roots of them are in the Hindu tradition, basically what we would call like the Hindu tradition. Um, but Kundalini Yoga is actually uses the mantras and stuff from Sikhism, from the Sikh tradition, mm. which is kind of sort of an offshoot of Hinduism that kind of came about like 500 years ago. It uses some of the same terms and names, but like is its own tradition. But Kundalini Yoga is not that, and it's not a religion. However, I think it's really cool. I feel like God or the universe was able to bring like, that Sikh wisdom and those Sikh gurus and their mantras and everything to us through the Kundalini tradition, through Yogi Bhajan, like building this whole school and system of yoga and being inspired to do it through um, the Sikh mantras, through the Sikh, you know, with the turbans and everything like that that they're doing uh, to wear. And I feel like, you know, an interesting point when I was just in India, because it's interesting like where kundalini comes from and yogi bhajan who brought it to the united states a lot of people studied like who did he learn from like where was he taught because he basically created this massive system of yoga with hundred thousands of kriyas all of these forms of breath work and hand mudras of all different kinds and mantras of different kinds done in different ways and all kinds of asana and it was like whoa where did this come from you know, and <clears throat> some people debate on like, did he create this? Did he get taught this? That kind of thing. And from my understanding, and what I learned from Karim Paul too, is I feel like he must have been such an energetically in tune being, and this must have been his dharma basically, and the universe mm -hmm. came, came through him and basically like brought this whole system of yoga together and and they call it the yoga for the aquarian age like for the new mm -hmm. the age of aquarius so it's kind of cool like i feel like the universe gifted it to us for um for this time you know but what is interesting is when i was just in india and we were doing yoga this big outdoor yoga they have in uh <clears throat> which would be more like the hindus but they have in varanasi which is uh the holiest city in India. It's like the holiest mm. city in Hindu tradition. And uh, what's we're, the name of the city? It's called Varanasi. Oh, no. It used to be called Banaras. The British had named it that. And the original name of it is Kashi. That's like its ancient name. And um, it's it, it's where everybody goes to get cremated. Uh, have been so for like the last 
3,500 years. And on the banks of the Ganga River, uh, the cremation grounds run 24-7, like for thousands of years, uh, stop. Because it's said that if you die there, um, Shiva, the god, whispers into your air and liberates your soul, basically. So people come from everywhere to go there and uh, the whole ba- beach like the whole banks of the water is just lined with uh, hospices actually because people are coming from everywhere to uh finish their life here by the by the water but anyways it's a very sacred place yeah I go there because they do it every morning and like maybe a hundred people go outside and what i thought was so cool the yoga we did was actually way more similar to kundalini yoga than like hatha or vinyasa yoga it was um working with breath of fire with different mudras with some of the like spinal work that we do in kundalini so it was really interesting to see um there wasn't any type of yogic flow like standing up going through a vinyasa flow so it was just interesting to see that um you know what they were doing out there was actually I think really resonated with what we do in the kundalini practice actually. Wow, it's super fascinating. I had no I didn't have an idea that 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 very sacred place was on that river and the story behind it. So thanks for sharing. That's that's unique. Did yeah. you feel a sense of um did you feel the sense of sacredness while you were there? Yeah, it's it's very, yeah, very powerful. And it's on the Ganga, which is the most sacred river in India, like the mother Ganga. And yeah, it's um extremely powerful. Like one of the girls I was with the first day she got there, we went down <clears throat> to the water just to do a little a little offering with these little flowers. You like light the candle and you put it in, kind of make a prayer. And she um excuse me and she immediately uh just like broke down in tears and felt like and it and I don't want to get into what her personal like thing was that came up but it was like a huge pain that came up and got released and she was sobbing for like half an hour and just off the power of like going down right by the river like right when she got there um so yeah it is very uh very sacred place for sure yeah that is cool yeah that is really cool yeah so yeah i mean maybe tell us a little bit about um what what you feel that the practice does or what it's done for you or i know you mentioned like when you first did it Mm -hmm. you would leave and you would just want to be in silence and not even listen to music or anything yeah yeah oh for me it's uh, so my background is mental health background. So I like I have my my master's degree in counseling. Mm. So we were we were we've been I've been trained to do counseling therapy and provide that space for people to process their feelings and emotions. And what Kundalini Yoga has done for me is be a consistent practice. Kind of I've I've had uh, several of our teachers re, re, you know refer to, for it refer to it as kind of a, a workout, a gym workout where you go in and exercise and something you got to kind of rebuild, build it, build that muscle, build the skill, um, the focus with meditation. Um, it's a gym for our, for our mind and heart. So it's, I've never had a consistent practice like that. And, and um, I know going through therapy myself and providing that counseling and it's only an hour at most when you're meeting with a patient or, or meeting with a therapist and that could be very beneficial to kind of think about things, but Kundalini, Kundalini Yoga has helped me move the energy through my body. So I can talk about it and be very cerebral about how my past has impacted me or how my beliefs um, and rationalize through that. But the body has always held for me the score. There's a book called The Body Holds the Score. So this is like an actual practice where folks can use to move the trauma through their body. Talking about it for me, even as a clinician, is could only get you so far. You know, that's a great start. It's a great place to have some self self awareness. But 
you know, uh, I think having a practice where you physically move and also with the breath can really um, move through trauma in a very fast way, but also a safe way where it's all up to you. How much you want to move that energy is up to you. Um, and that's what Kundalini has done for me. It's been that, been able to move that energy, the trauma through my body and being able to be more present with myself. Um, there's been moments where I just tune in and immediately just feel so much, so grateful for where I'm at. And it's just like, I'm able to tune into that gratitude so much faster. Um, I'm able to tune into the feelings I'm feeling when I'm not having the practice. You know, during my day, I can sense that I can feel my, like my energy move, my feelings move at a faster rate and I can be more aware of it and I can make a better decision of what I want to do with it. Um, so it's been a, it's been a whole life change for me. Wow. That was, yeah. That yeah. Was it's been a, you know, yeah. It's been a big, big change for me. So. Well, I think that's such a great point because you're a mental health counselor and I've um spent about, well, seven years working with, uh, people in addiction recovery and speaking at treatment centers in the last like four or five years working at um different outpatient programs and doing groups and uh working one-on-one -on -one, all kinds of things and i think the same thing which is is missed a lot in there sometimes i think like man if this person was just able to do a couple like kundalini classes or something they really break through because i you make a good point like of course there's a great benefit in talking about things and uh discussing them but sometimes it can only go to a certain point and there's a huge benefit in getting into uh like these practices like moving this kundalini energy like uh strengthening this auric field around you like working right. the breath releasing these emotions and tension through breathing through mantra through the asana the movement and i love how um i love how kundalini yoga gives you kriyas for everything like you know, like this is the Kriya for the heart center and the magnetic field, or this is the meditation to conquer um, self animosity, or the meditation mm -hmm. for a calm heart, or a bunch of the Kriyas for like the, the navel and the solar plexus for developing strength and courage and working through, um, you know, working through fear and indecisiveness. And it just is like such an really integrated approach the only part that sucks is there's so many kriyas and so many <laughs> it's like what do you, which ones do you do <laughs> you know uh but that's not yeah. that's why i think it's such a cool system though of yoga for this new age because uh it really can meet like anybody where they're at you know and even right when yeah. Teaching, yeah 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 no i, I like that yeah I, i'm glad you brought that up I think that also helps understand like, okay, let me check in with myself and then see what is it that I need, you know, do I need a, you know, am I, is my, do I need some more peace? Maybe the meditation for a calm heart. Um, am I having some animosity towards somebody else? Then maybe I should look at that Kriya. So I think it also re, it reinforces the, your ability to be self-aware. Like, okay, well, what is it? Let me tune in with myself. and like, what is it that I'm experiencing? And, and, what do I intentionally want to practice so I can focus on that area of my life? And I, that's really, I, that's been really helpful versus, um, yeah, it's been much more intentional and very focused and not like that. And it does provide it, you know, it's a, it does say that it, there is a specific outcome that you want to have. And I, I like how it just, um, it may happen the first time you do the Kriya. It may happen the hundredth time you do the Kriya. Yes. Or, so I think it's like, um, and it shows up very different for everybody. So it's like we, it, you can make it your own practice in terms of how it shows up for you, which is, I think it's really nice. Yeah. And it reminds, uh, it just made me think once I was teaching somewhere and one of the teachers was like, she's like, whenever I meet someone with Kundalini that does it, like there's always like a twinkle in their eye. And it made me think like, all of the teachers that I have came across, like our teachers, like Karam Paul and the ones that did our teacher training, like Sat Siri and Dave Saroop and Kartar and uh, the couple that I've met in Hawaii and Las Vegas and um, the other Shakta, the other woman in Chicago, they're all, everyone I've met who's been in the tradition and practiced it for a very long time is like very pure beings and is like very 
clear and present and i'm not saying they're you know above having problems but like everyone i've met that's Mm -hmm. done it for a long time just seems like um they all have like a special aura about them they're and they're very fun and cool people but they're also Mm -hmm. very dedicated and grounded but also um have great spiritual wisdom and insight and i just noticed that like anyone i know who's practiced for a long time seems to have something that i would like to you know like to have yeah yeah i'm glad you brought that up there's a sense of pureness pure and joy they're just like i feel like they're connected to a sense of play with life like they just kind of they kind of get they kind of get life at a very deep spiritual level yeah they can really show up they can really show up and whatever comes their way they kind of like equipped for so because of so many kriyas and practice of how to just handle whatever comes their way yeah it's such a good spiritual sadhana and i like to point out that like like you said so many kriyas that you know like anything like building any muscle or any fiber like you know it takes time and dedication and like and i'm actually not one that's done much of this but in kundalini yoga as you know like there's people that do kriyas for 90 days like Steph at Satnam did something for like a thousand days like some people do their Kriya for years and I actually would admit like for me if anyone wants to know about my practice I since I also part of my Satna is I do um ceremonial magic and I do uh Zen meditation and I do mantra uh in my own way with the beads from like my Hindu tradition so I'm not exclusively practicing kundalini yoga so i don't do it every single day um like some people do and maybe there's a time in my life when i will but it just depends where i'm at and what i'm doing you know i do it when i teach it i've been going to the satnam again on wednesdays to be in the practice Mm -hmm. we're in training you know we had a certain set to do for a, a while um so i just want people to know that too like it you know it depends you know, what you get from it is what you, what you put into it. And like when I teach, you know, some of my students come to my class once a month because I teach at a certain location once a month. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, you know, when they get something for their mind, body and spirit, that's that's really good at that time. Obviously, that's different than, you know, somebody who does it every day is going to have, right. a, you know, maybe a deeper and a different experience. Um, but I do think that, it's such a powerful practice that even for example doing it once a month uh i've noticed people still have great benefits they still love it even if they're only like i come to this one friday a month and i really get a lot out of it like it's still great it's not like you know i think so i think so oh, of course yeah of course of course i i i feel like it's it's a practice that everybody can incorporate into their life somehow whether it's once a month whether it's once a week or if they're, if they're really dedicated um, once a day or multiple times a day. So you're right. It's something we can all take from, take, take some from and, and benefit from. And of course, like any practice, whether it's a sport or a, a skill that you're you know learning, whether um, at work or something, if you dedicate your much more time, you have a deeper practice of that skill, of that awareness of that, that area of field that you're practicing or sport. Um, but I think this is something that we can all incorporate somehow. And um, I think one of the things that I, that I do mention I'm, when I'm working with my clients over the phone is showing them how to do deep breaths from the belly. Something very basic that we can all use and we can all kind of um, take in is just showing, reminding them of what a deep breath feels like. So have them place one hand on the stomach, one hand on the chest and have them rise their stomach, inhale, and inhale to, through their chest, and then exhale to kind of remind them to breathe deep from the from the belly, from the navel. And uh, yeah, so there's something we can all learn from and we can incorporate in our daily lives. It doesn't have to be a set kriya every day. It can be, you know, just having the awareness of your breath throughout the day can make a very big difference in your life. And I think a great thing about what you said is two things. One, when you get into these yogic practices and, and start to understand some of the philosophy, it's not like you're only benefiting when you're doing the practice. Like you're saying, you become much more aware throughout your day of, of your breath. Even when I'm in a different class, such as um, 
a vinyasa class or something like that, I still use my bandhas from Kundalini Yoga tight, like my root lock and my uh mm -hmm. the diaphragm and the chin and sometimes add in a breath of fire or these different things um but also i just had an experience today uh right before i came on here with you i was just i i don't know what it was today but i did some practices mm -hmm. this morning and i went to work and then i went to this rental property i'm buying and then i walked my dogs and my mind was just really um all over the place so I went in the shower before meeting up with you and it was not it's a place of disconnect or whatever it was that I normally am not at and um I was like man I got this interview uh with Jesus coming up and you know we moved our time up because it's something I forgot so I was in the shower and I started doing um just breathing through my left nostril because I remember it's the moon side and it's the side that gets you into your relaxed nervous system the parasympathetic and uh it really helped a lot and i just did maybe like 15 breaths through my left nostril and i was like really way calmed down and that's i think a good example of how um that could just be used in daily life you know right yeah well yeah glad that's a real life example right there today so that is awesome yeah <laughs> what yeah <clears throat> well i get i think one thing for me that i like to use a lot is um hearing myself chant so um whether it's uh just reminding myself if i'm chanting from my navel or if i'm chanting from my throat because for so long I, I growing up i didn't have a really have a voice growing up i felt like i couldn't speak up so that was one of my blocks during kundalini teacher training and just kind of getting to know to know myself as a kundalini yogi what are my blocks or you know where where am i feel like i'm my there's more energy stagnant and my throat was one of them where i feel like i couldn't really speak because i just didn't have that experience growing up like it wasn't open through my my throat chakra and um me too that's yeah yeah so i've been so glad that kundalini yoga has been able to remind myself that speaking the truth comes from the navel and it just rises and it just comes out with wisdom versus trying to force your thoughts and force your ideas. <clears throat> and one way I notice it is when I'm speaking, it, my voice projects from down here. And when I notice my, um, that I'm being tense or I know I'm not being my authentic self, I'm speaking from here and I feel like it's getting tighter. My throat's tighter. So then my voice pitch changes or I don't feel as calm. I speak faster. So Kundalini yoga has helped me relax and, you know, really tune back into my authentic self and um, slow down. So. Yeah, you can see that you talk very, um, very calmly, actually, that it's coming from a very calm place and, and stuff like that and very just intentional, which is, which is really cool. And I had that same issue of never uh, really projecting my voice and stuff and, um, then I took some Nada yoga classes with a teacher in Utah that lived in India for a few years. And he helped me with that a lot as I was starting to teach too, because teaching it is even more challenging because when I was in class, you're doing the mantra with everyone else. But when you're teaching it, you have to lead the mantra. And you're, if you're not doing it, nobody else is doing it. Um, right. That's even another, you know, another step. Um, and I also kind of wanted to touch on what I think is cool. My first Kundalini teacher that I took two classes with in Hawaii, uh, her name was Guru Darshan Khalsa. And that was how I learned the practice. And it was really a beautiful transmission that I didn't even know I was receiving. It was like very, I was on vacation there with my family and I was like, Ooh, I've never done this yoga. I always wanted to. So I just took it two days in a row. Really tiny. First class was three people. Second class was just me. And it, and it wasn't, yeah. And it wasn't like anything crazy happened, but somehow I got this, this current, like the transmission of this tradition from, from her, you know? And uh, one of the things she said was Kundalini yoga has you do a lot of weird things that, uh, mm. 
really challenge your ego like weird mm-hmm. postures that don't make you know that don't make sense and you're like what's this um and that made a lot of sense to me because what it's helped me lean into now is st- understanding more of the energetics of it and understanding that there's different movements we can do and different hand mudras and different asanas that can be so powerful and so healing and uh if you can get beyond the fact that they might seem to look funny or they might be not used to what you normally do um, because they're so specific and they're trying to obtain for you a specific result uh, and this energetic benefit, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the weird stuff is that that definitely gets you, cuts through the ego fast if you let it. I remember doing a few chants, not even chants, I think it was like, um, stomp your stomp your feet around the room as yeah. long as you can and at first I was like how much and um, you know it felt weird and then no nope, let's just and then you just get into it um, there's one where we uh, I think we did in the teacher training where we just had a laugh laugh as laugh as loud as you can and <laughs> there were some people that just took off and just laugh as loud as they could and it like makes makes me think it's like it's a, it's a very inner experience if you can tune everybody out, um, you can really come into yourself and reframe and re, 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 uh, redefine that relationship between you and yourself, your, and your ego, and what's getting in the way, and then practice letting go of that ego or cutting that ego where you can really show up authentically and just let go and, and be. So yeah, those, those are probably one of the more, yes. powerful, more powerful things that to cut the ego right away is the weird stuff that seems weird but it's really powerful and intentional. Yes. I, I feel like anything that challenges our just like conventional way of the ego structure uh, can, can be really beneficial, you know, yeah. because, because we're so much more than that. And it's like, we've learned this ego structure to function in the world but we don't have to exclusively identify with it or be limited by it. And this helps us to kind of get out of that, which not just when you're on the mat, but then carries into life. And it's helped me. I think that's a good point. I think it's helped me to be much more authentic about who mm-hmm. I am and mm-hmm. not worried about having to fit into to something or like be like everyone else or whatever, just more my authentic self you know yeah 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 that's yeah i had a a really my first experience i had where i was like where's this voice coming from um this was about two months of kundalini yoga my brother and i go to uh home depot and we're picking up some materials and there's this older man lugging um putting some drywall on his truck and he's struggling by himself so then I look at my brother and we kind of look at each other like, we should probably ask him first if you need some help. So then my brother asked him, hey, would you like some help? You know, we can help you out. And the guy says, well, I'm not going to say no. And then I don't know where it came from, but out of my body, my body just responded and said, well, you can say yes. Whoa. And the guy was like, the guy was like, I guess I can. And I'm like, all right, let's help you out. I don't know where it came from, but after doing kundalini yoga that was my first experience where like like yeah god spoke through me and um the universe spoke through me and it was just like it's just like i I didn't think about that i didn't have like oh i should say this or i didn't think of if i say this he might say no it just came out it's like well you can say yes and it came out in a very loving way that he was able to receive it and just say i guess i can and (laughs) i was like whoa like where does this come from and that's I've been having beautiful. tons of moments like that. Yeah, I've been having tons of moments like that where I don't I'm not I'm not really like thinking from an ego perspective. I'm just showing up. And um, yesterday or yesterday I was at at the beach playing spike ball, and I didn't know one person. And then when I left, I met like a ton of people. And the way I interacted with them, engaged with them, I was there was like no social anxiety. I was just showing up and you know being myself, and also being very playful with people and having fun. And that's something I wouldn't have done in the past. And I know Kundalini Yoga has set me up for 
situations like that where I can really be authentic. And if somebody doesn't like me, then that's okay. You know, um, I'm being myself and there's nothing I can do about who I am. Um, I'm just showing up with love and that's really, somebody can receive it. Cool. Like that guy, he was able to receive that comment and that's help. And he responded with, you know, a, a response that was allowed him to be helped. So, yeah. Yeah. Authenticity is a big deal. And what you big said deal. is so beautiful. Um, I think that's an important way I could explain it too, is as we do these practices, it purifies you really. It makes your vessel more pure and able to receive so that mm-hmm. instead of being like this separate entity the universe can can much more easily like work through you and you can be in the flow and um mm-hmm. one thing i've been realizing and i i learned this through through studying ceremonial magic but the same thing with kundalini yoga is as you do the practices it it raises your vibrations like everything is everything in this universe is energy. We're all energy. So your energy actually goes on a higher vibration. It starts to move quick, circulates faster. And if you could see your aura and everything, it would be moving like that. And that allows you to, um, one, be more purified. So it's like pushing things out of you in your life that don't belong there um, because they're not getting stagnant as much. There's not as much stuck. And then it's also... um, allowing you to basically download more wisdom from the universe because as you're like vibrating at these higher frequencies you can receive more because there's certain understandings and wisdom and insight that only become available to us when when we're vibrating at a certain Mm. frequency and so it's like i think that's one of the subtle aspects we don't even always realize but uh you know, as we continue our practice, like we can grow in all these different ways because of it, you know, where like, say somebody's not, uh, doesn't have to be Kundalini specifically, but say somebody like, you know, doesn't do any work on themselves and they're in this like whatever state that they're fixing in, it can be very hard to receive like any new or deeper insights or revelations or epiphanies or realizations because the energy is like not moving on those levels and it just like nothing can get through to right. it you know so i think that's pretty cool too to think of it like that yeah yeah so where do you see going forward with your kundalini practice and generally just with all of it yeah it's, that's actually a really good question um right now i'm teaching in san diego Kundalini yoga and it's um, geared to men only Mm. and that's something I've been doing it was more of a time constraint when I moved out here you know I didn't want to commit to something that was um, three or four times a week to teaching I kind of wanted to get into it um, one step at a time and at the the Kundalini yoga studio the only opening they had was a teacher that would teach for men men only so that was like a um, something that was Something I'm always passionate about is helping men reconnect with themselves. The suicide rates in the U.S. and all over the world is extremely high. And there's a lot of men taking their lives. And if there's anything I can do specifically for men to build that safe space where they can have a sense of peace for the first time ever ever, or um, feel like a sense of community or feel like they can connect with themselves at a deeper level other than what they've known, um, that to me feels very fulfilling. So that's what I've been doing this past year, teaching about once or twice a month for men only. And um, it's it's been a group been a group that's been growing, and and I really do like that. Um, I'm I feel like I'm ready to branch out to a community class. I think there's an opportunity at my studio I teach at for that, and I, I know that um, the women that are in my life on social media and in in person they want they want to they want a class with me. So um, yeah. That, yeah. Go ahead. So it's just, yeah. So it's, it's, you know, I'm taking my time and I'm, I'm following, you know, the downloads that I'm receiving of where I need to be at what time in my life. And at first it was, you know, men's only. And I think now I'm, I'm ready to, to, to serve up in a different capacity. That's incredible. I mean, that's cool. Most of my students are actually females. And I think that's incredible that the universe guided you to that because um, one, I think you're a super good person for that. And two, I, 
honestly, I love seeing that because that's something I've been thinking about a lot because, you know, especially in the yoga and spiritual communities, there's lots of women's groups, right? Like even by me, like they'll do like all women's whatever yoga retreats or journal things or whatever it might be. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of women's groups that have formed around like spiritual communities and, uh, there's much less men's groups, I believe. That's what it seems to me. So, um, I think that's really cool. I think that's really important. Um, yeah. And so, you know, as we, what about you? What what about for you? Yeah. What's your, what's been your journey and what do you feel like you've been, you want to go into, I guess the remainder of this year, the calendar year, you know, what do you see yourself doing? Is there anything different that you're doing or yeah, um, that you want to do? Yeah. As far as Kundalini yoga, um, so I've been teaching for about a year. I, I started doing private in the beginning, like private classes on zoom, which, um, I still offer, but I don't have any going on at the moment. And then I teach at like four or five, I was teaching at a recovery center too, but I'm not, but about four different yoga studios right now. And we do, um, just one class a month at each location. And, um, it varies from maybe, um, it just varies. Some classes have five yeah. people, some cl- one location sometimes has 20 people. Um, so it just depends, but <clears throat> yeah, I've been working with implementing different Kriyas and meditations and pranayamas and finding, uh, you know, seeing students develop in their practice and things like that. And people that have been practicing yoga, some, a lot of people are newer because they knew me so it brought them into this yogic practice which is pretty cool and then a lot of people that were practicing other forms of yoga and then also found this to be beneficial and to kind of take them somewhere else that they were like feeling a little stagnant or something and then they're like whoa this yoga is cool like teachers and stuff that that teach in this area have been like oh I like taking this as part of my own practice that type of thing you know And I've been, um, for anyone watching this on this YouTube channel, I have one other video about Kundalini Yoga and I have um, that Calm Your Heart Meditation and I have a Pranayama and I'm actually doing a six-part Pranayama series. So I did one and then I'll have the second one uh, coming out, but I'll put the links for those um, in the bio for anyone that wants to check it out. So me and Jesus are planning... Um, and with a third partner to do a kundalini yoga based retreat with other practices also involved um next year most likely in belize most likely next uh winter-ish next late fall winter-ish so that's very exciting i think that'll be an awesome offering and like you know a good five six ish days to really um get together with the community and to get into our practices and to really grow and transform a lot um i think it can't be underestimated how much benefit there can be when people uh come together for a spiritual purpose like that and um a week might be like oh that doesn't seem like that much time but i can tell you i learned from my experiences going to india like this last time with people um really a whole life can be transformed or a practice really deepened um and a lot of transmissions picked up just in a short you know a short period of time like that i think so for sure yeah of course uh of course i would like to add how powerful it is when you're in community with others and you mentioned that um there's times where somebody in the room has reflected on their experience that they have from that either Kriya or that day of, from that from a retreat. And the way they were able to put it into context and words helped me understand that that's what I'm feeling or that's what I was processing, but I didn't know the words. So that's where community healing really yes. can be very powerful, where somebody can share an experience and you can pick away from that experience. They're like, oh, that's what I was kind of feeling. So you could put some words to it, some feelings to it. And, um, and at the same time, you feel a sense of, closeness and to, to get togetherness and community so you know uh definitely do not un, you know underestimate like you said the fact that it's five days uh, we'll be all together in one place you know um 
Um, so there's something beautiful about, um, you know, waking up together as a group and then, you know, having an intentional dinner and uh, kind of like a, a good night ceremony. And then again, repeating something really nice about that. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, we'll definitely have more details to come on that. And yeah, thank you so much for um, talking about all this with us. It's been yeah. beautiful. Is there anything else that you wanted to wanted to say? Yeah, so one thing I was thinking about right now was uh, what's one thing that a student has mentioned to you that was really impactful for them during that class or after that class? Um, you know, do you have a vivid moment where a student was like, this has brought me closer to myself or something? Um, I think that'd be a cool way to end the, end the podcast. Yeah. Kind of like, yeah, and uh, end with something like that where we can share it to the public or to our audience, um, you know, what maybe one or two of our uh, yogis have been mentioned to us after their, after their class. Yeah, I've had, um, I've definitely had a couple of people, more than a couple that have either told me that they cried at the end of class in our Shavasana or that they started, you know, started to cry and felt like a release during that. I've had, um, you know, a couple of women that have told me they've had really bad sleeping issues and don't sleep very well. And after taking mm -hmm. class, they've uh, slept really good and had really wow. good night's sleeps. So I think that's pretty cool too. Um, and, you know, I've had a student recently talking to me a lot about her uh, Kundalini energy just like mm. the feeling it awakened and how it's moving through the body and even in ways that I haven't experienced myself. And I thought that was really cool too. Mm. Uh, I understood it and I could give guidance, but it was like in a really powerful way where I was like, wow, I wish it happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, those are a couple that I could, um, you know, that I could say sometimes people have said that they just feel like really peaceful. Um, sometimes that, uh, a lot of anger has came out of them during certain parts of the class, you know, like during certain, certain Koreas. Yeah. Yeah. I have similar experiences where I've had a student tell me we did the, we did an, I am, I am mm -hmm. meditation. Was... And in, in the first part of it is, uh, you know, to yourself, I am. And then I am in terms of the universe, like who am I in relation to the universe? And there was, two friends that came for the first time, they were both barbers. So they've never done yoga ever before in their, in their lives. And they trusted me to be in my class. And one of them has said that he has never felt a connection to him, uh, and a connection greater to himself than other than to him and his family. He's like, well, then who I, he's like, I, I didn't never thought about who am I outside of myself and my family? Like I am the universe. And that was he's like, I've never thought about that. And my mind was just blown. Next time I got a haircut from him about a, two weeks later, he's like, I'm still thinking about that. Like, I am connected to everything else, not just me. So that to me makes my heart glow because I'm just like, if I can touch um, any person to think out, you know, that they are connected to everybody around them and everything, you know, we will treat everything else with respect and with love, just as we yeah. do with our family and ourselves. So yeah, that yeah, was a huge. really cool experience. Yeah, he had a huge breakthrough. I mean, that's something I could tell you that like from like the spiritual literature that I study is actually a theme that's talked about is that when we're in our limited self, we can only love like ourselves and a few family mm -hmm. members. So what mm -hmm. him doing that practice with you like really broke through and expanded him into his universal self. Yeah, that's a great example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's <Yeah>. beautiful. <clears throat> that's so cool. Like, yeah, then it expands our love and our you know then how can you let the universe would be is a more peaceful place as more of us recognize our unity with it right right right, right. i like how you put that yeah thank you well thank you i appreciate you for bringing me on and i i know it was a great time sacred time so thank you thank you satnam as we say Satnam. i honor the truth in you that's also in me